hope uh, everyone's doing good this morning. You know, let me just say it's always a joy for me to be at this vantage point here looking out at everyone and your wonderful faces. Uh, you really look good this morning, so let me just share that with you. You look good. So I hope you feel as good, as good as you look. <laughs> so you, and you look wonderful. You look wonderful. Now, as you, there might have been, uh, as you look back through your life, there might have been a time where uh, you may or may not have had someone who might have hurt you. Have you ever had someone who's hurt you before? Now, it could have been, now it could have been like maybe last year. It could have been a couple months ago. It might have been this month. It might have been this week. It might even have been today, this morning. But at some point or another, somebody has hurt you. They've sinned against you and they've made you feel bad. Has that happened to you before? Just by a show of hands. Anybody? All right. That's right. Pretty much all of us at some point or another in our life have had somebody who has hurt us. Hurt us deeply sometimes. Hurt us not very much. But nonetheless, they've hurt us. And at that point, you had the opportunity to, you had a choice. You had the opportunity, and forgive me if I walk away from the microphone here, it feels a little, sounds different. You had a choice. When that person hurt you, you had a choice to either retaliate against them, you could fire back at them, or you could just choose not to say anything and just move on and stuff it inside of you. You can just take all that anger, take that hostility, and just put it inside of you and just say, move on. Because that's the Christian thing to do, right? Isn't that the Christian thing to do? Isn't that what we're supposed to do? We're supposed to just turn the other cheek. So we stuff it inside of us, we bury it deep within us, and we move on. Now we think, we think, oh, well, if I just stuff it inside of me, we won't have any issues here. I'll just forget about it. It'll go away. I'll just live with it. But the truth is, even though in your mind you might forget about it, but what is your body doing? Your body doesn't forget. Our bodies are amazing things that are made by God. And so if we get into an argument with someone, we've got a choice to either deal with the situation right then or just to shove it inside, stick it inside of us, and there it is. And we can choose to live with it. We try to forget it, but but guys, for example, just, just to the guys in the house, you know how if somebody does you wrong or has hurt you, each time you see them, it kind of comes back up out of nowhere, right? Have you ever had that instance where you just you don't think about it for months or years, and then all of a sudden you see the person for the first time, and it's not, oh, man, how are you doing? It's like, oh, yeah, I remember you hurt me some time ago. You know, you just feel that come out of nowhere. It's because it's stuffed down in your body, tucked away, but it's still there. Now, in your mind, it's not because you've tried to forget about it. And so you might have forgotten about it, but the, mind, the body and the mind often operate independently of each other. In your body, it's still there. And we think, well, it wasn't really that bad because I forgot about it. Really? Is it, was it really that bad? You know, there are many things that go on in our body that we don't know about. That we don't know until later. For example, one thing that comes to mind is cancer, for example. A lot of times we don't learn about cancer. It's going all in our, on in our body. But we don't learn about it until later on. Or maybe a heart condition, for example. Maybe we have heart disease, but we don't know it until we see what, what it, you know, the outward effects of it. We don't know what's going on until we see the results after something that's been there for a while. The most dangerous thing that we could do is to stuff inside of us that hostility, the anger, these feelings that we have when someone hurts us, when someone does harm to us. It's very dangerous to our bodies that we do that. Easy to forget about, but very dangerous to our bodies. What is forgiveness? And that's a, I'm gonna open that up to the floor. 
What is forgiveness? Do we, do we know what the definition of forgiveness is? Anybody? No right or wrong answer. Just tell me what, what's, what's on your mind. I'll just yell it out. What is forgiveness? All right, I'm going to stop you right there. Well, here we go. There are many definitions of forgiveness, but one good one is letting go a person who's injured you, wronged you, is letting them go of their debt toward you as Christ let us go of our debt toward him who saved us at the cross. All right, very good. Very so good. it's letting go. Letting go. And letting go, you are set free. And they're so, set free. And we honor God's excellent. word. Excellent. So when we let go, we're letting go of what? That resentment? Maybe that you have to that other person? We're letting go of that resentment. And you know what we're also doing when we let go? When we forgive? Not only are we letting go of that resentment, but we're also giving up our right to get even. We're giving up our right to get even. So we are giving up our resentment and we're giving up our right to get even. Now what is un what is unforgiveness? That's for like, we just talked about forgiveness. What is unforgiveness? Never letting me go. It, never letting go, right. It's the, it's the opposite of what forgiveness is, right? So we hold on to the resentment. We don't give up our right to get even. We want to see it through to the end, don't we? That is unforgiving. You know, having an unforgiving spirit is a very rebellious spirit. It's very rebellious. Very rebellious. You know, there are several ways that unforgiveness affects us, and we don't even know about it. And, and I'll tell you what, let me just stop right there. I should have said this from the beginning. But this message today, because it is so important, if ever there was a day you wanted to take notes, today is the day. Today is the day. So grab you a pen on the back side of your programs. There's a place to take notes. I have my notes that I'm working on up here. I'll be more than happy to give them to you or make you a copy. I'm videotaping it in the back. It's my grandmother up in Oklahoma. I always videotape when I'm in, this, in the pulpit for her. And uh, I will put it on YouTube and give a link to it so you can watch this again if you want to. But today is a today that you're going to hear a message that has affected me so deeply and has molded me into the person that I am today. And this message, I mean, it's, it's clearly number one from the Bible. But you know, listening... You go through life and you get different sources and you combine them all together. And what does the Bible say? And that is what I'm hoping to present to you today. So I hope that the message you hear today will affect you like it did, I know, for my wife and I, uh, in how to handle people, how to forgive others. So definitely take notes or definitely listen up and we'll make sure you get a copy of the notes. So we talked about what is forgiveness, what is unforgiveness. It's an attitude of rebellion. But what does unforgiveness do to us? Well, how does it affect us? Well, it affects us in many ways. Well, well, number one, it affects our prayer life. Obviously, God sees right through us, right? It'll affect our prayer life. God knows our heart. How else does it affect us? Well, <coughs> it affects our worship. How about these wonderful songs that, that Steve is teaching us? How can we stand in the pew and read the words up here and sing from our heart if our heart is full of unforgiveness? Isn't that in contradictory to what it is we're saying with our lips as we sing? So it affects us in that way. It affects our witness. Unforgiveness affects our witness. How can we possibly go out into the world and share the love of Jesus Christ and the wonderful things that he has done for you and I, forgiving of our sins, if we ourselves are unforgiving? Oh, do as I say, not as I do. 
Is that our witness? That's not right. But it also, as I mentioned earlier, affects us physically. Unforgiveness affects us physically. When we stuff that stuff inside of us, it messes with us, whether we know it or not. It hurts us and culminates and comes together inside of us and affects us physically. A godly spirit, having a godly spirit versus having an unforgiving spirit. Can those two both inhibit the same heart? What do you think? Can a godly spirit and an unforgiving spirit both occupy the same heart? How can we have a godly spirit and an unforgiving spirit at the same time? It's either one or the other. They're wrestling with each other. Right. They're wrestling with each other because they're both not the same. They can't, they can't both be in the same place. Either you're going to have an unforgiving spirit or you'll have a godly spirit, which is a forgiving spirit. All right. So I think we've got on the screen up here Matthew 6, 12. Now, I wanted to point it out to you also, Matthew twenty two thirty nine. 39. We're not going to work out of there, but you all know that verse. The greatest commandment, number one, we're supposed to love our God with our heart, our mind, our soul. And the second part of that is to love our neighbor. That's right, to love our neighbor as ourselves. That's right. Two major pillars in Christianity. Love God with all your heart and mind and soul, and to love your neighbor as yourself. So we're branching off of that love your neighbor as yourself portion. And we're just looking at today, how can we love our neighbor? What is one way that we can love our neighbor? And so that's what we're looking at in Matthew 6, 12. So if you would open your Bibles up, Matthew chapter 6, either open them up or turn them on. Whichever kind of Bible you have today. <laughs> so we're going to read Matthew 6, 12. Uh, but I'm, I'm actually going to branch a little bit beyond that and actually look at 9 through 13. Now, you probably know this portion of Scripture as the Lord's Supper. Or as the Lord's Prayer, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Not the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Prayer. And let me read that to you out of my Bible, the Holman Christian Standard. And it says in verse 9, Matthew chapter 6, Therefore, you should pray like this. Our Father in heaven, your name be honored as holy. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And here's our key verse today, verse 12. And forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. So in a like manner, as 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 uh, you forgive us of our debts in a like manner, help us to forgive others of their debts. And in verse 13, and do not bring them to us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now allow me to continue in verses 14 and 15. It says, for, and this is key to our, our message today. For if you forgive people their wrongdoing, your heavenly Father will forgive you as well. Verse 15, but if you don't forgive people, your Father will not forgive your wrongdoing. Did you hear that? Let me, let me read that verse 15 one more time. But if you don't forgive people, your Father will not forgive your wrongdoing. I also like uh, one other translation I was looking at, a study in this portion of Scripture. In the New Living Testament, it, in verse 15 it says, but if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. Now look at verse 12 again. And forgive us of our debts. Now when we forgive somebody, we forgive a debt. That's what forgiveness is. As we mentioned earlier, sin and forgiveness is forgiveness of that sin. When we forgive someone, we forgive a debt. We forgive a debt. And actually the word here, forgive, means to bear the burden. We take on that burden when we forgive someone. An example would be, let's say, you might find you Steve today. Oh. All right, thanks. Uh, an example would be, let's say 
Steve comes over and mows my yard. And then I come back to Steve a day or two later and I say, Steve, I love the yard, you did a great job, but I got a problem, I can't pay you. I just don't have the money. I can't pay you for that, for mowing my yard. And Steve says, you know what? Don't worry about it. I Don't worry about it. You just forgive it. Don't worry about it. You don't have to pay me. Well, what did that just cost Steve? Whatever the price of that yard mow is, right? Let's say it was 50 bucks. That cost Steve $50 to say that to me. It wasn't just words. When we forgive someone, we're forgiving a debt. It is a debt that is being paid. And if it's not going to be, if it's not with a forgiving spirit, if it's not paid by the person, obviously when we forgive someone, we are paying that debt. We are paying that debt. So, why should I forgive? We know it's the right thing to do, right? The Bible tells us we should turn the other cheek. We should forgive others. But why should I forgive people when they hurt me? So much more gratifying to lash out at them, isn't it? To, to get back at them. Why should I forgive them? I mean, it could be it could be a spouse, a husband, or a wife that did something to you, maybe an employer, an employee, somebody you work with that might have done you wrong. Could it be a neighbor of yours that had done something that made you angry? Why should you forgive them? Well, the first reason you should forgive them, quite simply, and this summarizes my whole entire sermon right here. Quite simply, the reason that you should forgive others is because you yourself have been forgiven. You yourself have been forgiven. You should forgive because you have been forgiven. Because God so willingly, he were there willingly, forgave you, you should forgive others. We could just put a period right there and call this sermon over with. Because... That is the key to forgiveness. So willingly God has forgiven you, therefore you willingly should forgive others. Ephesians 4, verse 32 says, And be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving one another, just as God also forgave you in Christ. So God has forgiven you, He has shown grace to you, therefore, you must show grace to one another. We need to forgive because we have been forgiven. We are to be kind, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as we read in this verse that God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven us. You know, let me just point out one other thing, too. We're talking about forgiving other people. But don't forget about yourself. Because sometimes things happen that you do. And you just hate yourself for it. I know. I did it. I do it. And still will probably continue to do it. I hold myself to a certain standard. You know that Marine Corps mentality. You know, I try to do things right. So when I goof up, I just beat myself up over it. And sometimes it's hard to forgive myself. You know, let me share with you. And I'm going to walk away from the microphone a little bit. Let me show you just something that happened just yesterday that ties right into this. To give you an example, after uh, we were here doing, my wife and I, we were here working on some of the yard sale stuff yesterday, and after we got through working with that, we decided, well, let's just go grab a bite to eat. So we took off and we went to one of the local restaurants here in Slidell, and when we, we went in to the restaurant, and as usual, our eyes are always bigger than our stomachs, so we had ordered a lot. And so, we ordered one of the to-go boxes. We ordered a couple of these to-go boxes, put all our food in that, and I've got two to-go boxes and I'm just carrying out. And I'm walking out, and I'm looking over here, somebody saying hi to me or whatever. I'm looking over here, and out of the blue, somebody on this side walks right into me. Wham! I mean, it wasn't just a, a tap. The guy, like, I mean, must have literally pushed me or something as he was walking by me. Well, the thing fell off, my little 
tray thingy fell off the to-go box upside down and landed in the, it didn't open, thank goodness, but it landed right in the middle of the, of the thing. And I'm thinking, whoa, you know, my naturally, my first instinct is to go, you know, what is going on here? And turn around and say something. But no, I said, oh, okay, well, let me get my stuff up off the floor. So I reached out, wrapped up, thinking surely the guy's going to be there to say, oh, I'm sorry, let me help you with that. But that didn't even happen. So now I really was going, <laughs> I was going, you know, the hair on the back of my head was starting to stand up. <laughs> so, so I reached down, I grabbed the stuff, and I'm like, man, God, man, that was really rude. And I turned around, and I looked behind me to see who it was, because I wanted to know who that was. And it was one of these uh, autism kids. Uh, the kid had, like, autism or something along those lines, you know, that... Uh, Clearly, he was, uh, you know, the mentally challenged type kid. I don't know if it was medical or whatever, but I just know, you know, I could tell that clearly this was a kid that that needed a lot more help than, you know, than me jumping on him, you know, for knocking my thing up. So I turned around and looked at him. The point is, is that here's a young man who was not able. He didn't turn around, looked at me, and turned around, around and kept on walking. So. What do I do? I'm angry. But yet, I can't reasonably expect him to come and say, hey, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do it, I'm going to pick that stuff up. So what do I do? What could I do in that particular situation? Well, just as I know I have been forgiven, I have to let that go. I have to forgive myself because I, he's not angry. He wasn't mad. I was the only one that was upset over the whole deal. And so I had to, I could either, I could have chosen to go throughout the rest of the day saying, man, that guy made me mad. He's knocking my stuff off, you know. You know, he needs to watch what he's doing. Or I could just choose at that point to say, just God forgive me because I'm not ever going to get him to come and apologize. I don't think he's able to do that. Just take the anger from me. Forgive me for what I've done, which is immediately go to, you know, green mode. <laughs> you know, so we have got to, my point is, by, by telling you this, you've got to learn to forgive yourself. Learn to forgive yourself. Don't forget about yourself. Because the same things, the same way that you can be hurt from inside bitterness, you can be affected the same way from yourself, not forgiving yourself. So I just wanted to point that out to you. All right. So we should forgive because we have been forgiven. That is one reason why I should forgive. Another reason that we should forgive, because, well, as we just read in our scripture earlier, if we do not forgive, then no longer can we be forgiven. If we do not forgive, then no longer than we, can we be forgiven. Verse 12, and forgive us of our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And then in 15 it says, but if you don't forgive people, your father will not forgive your wrongdoing. Do you realize how dangerous this is for us? If we're, what we're saying here is, God, treat me like I treat other people. As I forgive people, you forgive me the same way. Treat me as I treat other people. Are you a forgiving person? Do you easily forgive others? Now you might be one of those who says, well, I'll forgive them, you know, but I just want to have nothing more to do with them. Are you one of those? Well, if we go by what scripture just says, God says, well, okay, I'll forgive you, but I won't have anything else to do with you. Or maybe you're one of those who says, God, I'll forgive them, but I just can't forget what they did to me. They really hurt me. I can't forget that. God says, okay, I'll forgive you too, but I'm just not going to forget what you have done. 
It is a prayer that we need to take very seriously. Forgiveness is a very important part of our lives, one that we must take seriously. If we want to be treated, if we want God to treat us with, with unconditional forgiveness, then we too need to be treating others with unconditional forgiveness. forgiveness. So why else should I forgive? Well, the first one is because you have forgiven. The second one is because if we do not forgive, then no longer can we be forgiven. The next reason we should forgive is you should forgive others because if we do not forgive, personal harm will come to us. Personal harm will come to us. We are kept in bondage. We are kept in bondage. You know, when you start thinking, well, I'm just not going to let them off the hook. You know, they did me wrong. I'm just not going to let them off the hook. So it's just important to remember that even though a lot of the times they don't even know they're on the hook, first of all. So really, it's just you that's on the hook. You stay right there on the hook with them. You stay right there on the hook with them. You say, well, I'll just get even with them. That's what I'll do. I'll just get even with them. We'll call it good, and then we can move on from here. I heard a great illustration that I wanted to share with you. You want to get even? And I never thought of it until, uh, until I looked at it this way. Whenever you want to get even with someone, remember God's up here, right? You're here, and this wicked person, somebody who's hurt you is down here. Now, you say, well, I'll get even. Well, what you do, when you get even, you're coming down to him, to his level. So you want to get even, huh? Is that really what you want to do? But if you say, well, I want to forget. Well, what you do is then bring him up to your level in forgiveness. So getting even is not the answer. Forgiveness is what we should do. And you know, you might say, well, I'll forgive them, but you know what? I'm just going to hate them. Yeah, this person is just no good. I'm going to hate them. I hate them. I don't like them. It's better off if I go this way and that other person goes this way. Well, you've avoided the situation. And what have you done with the situation? You've stuffed it inside of you. Because you haven't resolved the problem. Now, when you stuff that inside of you, we have another name for that. It's called bitterness. You start collecting this bitterness, and the bitterness just, as soon as you put that inside of you, it starts to grow and take, it's like roots come out and just latches itself to the inside of you. And this bitterness will stay, it will not just go away on its own at all until the situation is dealt with. It might be years later, but that bitterness is still there because it has taken root inside of you. It's a, it gets inside of you like an acid and just eats away. Bitterness does. You've got to get rid of it quickly before it gets inside and has a chance to latch on. You know, another reason that we should forgive also is that, quite simply, we gain back our brother. And a brother is a precious thing. A brother or a sister. Everyone that we deal with is either a brother or they're a potential brother, or they're a sister, or a potential sister. In Matthew 18, 15, if your brother sins against you, go and rebuke him in private. If he listens to you, you have won your brother. A brother is a precious thing to have. A sister is a precious thing to have. If we put that bitterness inside of us, we have put a barrier between us and our brother. The Bible tells us we need to not allow that to happen, not allow it to get to that point. You know, when we as children of God argue amongst each other, how do you think that makes God feel? And I'm, I'm not saying that as some silly question. I'm asking them truthfully. How, well, okay, let's ask, let me rephrase it. How about, by a show of hands, who in here has children? Doesn't matter what age, but who has raised children at some point? So that's just about everybody in here. 
So when they fought each other, when they had their little brother-sister arguments, how did that make you feel when you saw that? Were you happy for it? Were you glad to see him fighting? No. It probably disgraced you a little bit, right? Right before you got mad and straightened them out? It probably made, made you a little sad. You know, and, and don't you think in some way it, that God in some way too is also disgraced when we squabble, when we fight amongst each other? It disgraces God. But you know, it also, it disgraces the rest of us as well because we see it. When we squabble with each other, we see it. Other people pick up on it. We can look at your body language. We can tell when you're fighting with somebody because you're avoiding them. We can see that, you know. It disgraces those around you. It's not just the two people that are involved in the situation. It disgraces the, the people around you. And then, God forbid, we have a new visitor to the church who immediately picks up on the anger in the room. Because they can tell as well. You know, they say a person decides within the first 10 minutes when they come to a new church whether or not they're going to stay or not. If they walk in and they see me or you or whoever arguing with each other or we have to go behind closed doors instead of out here greeting them, of course, what do you think they're going to think? Is this the church I want to go to? No. Not at all. Not at all. So, arguing... And, ha and having an unforgiving spirit affects not just you, but the people around you. The Bible says that we are to dwell together in unity. Proverbs 6, 19. The Bible says here in Proverbs 6, 19, that God hates a person who sows discord in the family. Now you might say, well, the person that harmed me, he's not a fellow believer. You know, he's not a fellow brother. You know, so he doesn't know. Uh, it's, it's fine. You know, he's not a fellow believer. Wrong. That is not the attitude to take. If someone hurts you, if someone harms you, and this person is not a believer, could be somebody at work or whatever the case, wherever you might be in life. They hurt you. And if they're not a believer, they should be all the more the object of your compassion, the object of your pity. Because number one, not only are they, not only have they done you wrong, for starters, but they're blind as well. They don't have the grace that you have. They don't have the power of the Holy Spirit that you have. They don't have the things that you have to help them overcome an unforgiving spirit. So have some compassion on them. I mean, without God, they're only going to hell, right? And you don't need to be driving them closer by representing our faith and being angry and unforgiving at the same time. Have compassion on these people. Have compassion. Now. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, why should we forgive? Well, we should forgive because you have been forgiven. If we don't forgive, we can no longer be forgiven. We should forgive others because it brings personal harm among, upon ourselves. It keeps us in bondage. And finally, because we gain our brother back or our sister back. But as I mentioned earlier, when I was given the little illustration with Steve earlier, if he forgave me of the money I would owe him for having to mow my yard, it cost him. So we know that if we're going to be if we're going to be forgiving that it's going to cost. It is going to cost us. Well, what's it going to cost us? What's it going to cost us? Because we know forgiveness is a canceling of a debt, as we said earlier. It is a canceling of a debt. So what are the requirements? Well, let's take 
a, a quick look here at, at Ephesians 4.32. Remember, as we, we did read it earlier, Ephesians 4.32, and it says, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving one another, just as God also forgave you in Christ. And that's the way you want to forgive. The kind of, the kind of forgiveness that, that God had to pay, that Jesus paid, that is the kind of forgiveness that we want to have, unconditional forgiveness. Now, the Bible says that freely you have received, freely you should give. Now, some people, when they become angry, they become very unforgiving. And they don't want to forgive until they've extracted that pound of flesh from somebody. Now, you might get... You might run into somebody who they've been wronged, they've been harmed, someone has hurt them, and so immediately they'll start to talk behind their back. They might talk bad to, to somebody else about them. They might give you dirty looks. They might just choose not to talk to you. There might be many ways that this person is trying to lash out at you. And then... After a week or two of doing that, they walk up to you and they say, you know what, you really hurt me, you're forgiven. And you're like, what? What do you mean? I don't want to, I've already paid the price. I don't want to be forgiven. You are to forgive freely, not after you yourself have pulled a pound of flesh from them. You need to forgive freely right away. Don't wait to get any kind of revenge on someone. And because, and because you forgive, you should do it quickly. It's important that if someone does you wrong or if someone hurts you, that you should forgive quickly. You don't want to stuff it inside and allow bitterness to grow with inside of you at all. The Bible says that we need to let all that bitterness be put away from us. We need to be in a hurry to forgive someone. Otherwise, we're putting the situation in grave circumstances by allowing bitterness to come into our lives, into our heart. I mean, look at an example. Jesus Christ on the cross. Right there on the cross, right in the heart of all the action. What did he say? He said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. Jesus Christ, our model, was quick to forgive, despite how badly he was being treated and hurt. He was quick to forgive. So should we. We need to be quick to forgive. Do not hold it inside. Do not stuff it and allow it to become bitterness. It becomes very difficult to heal. It becomes an infection, this bitterness, if we allow it to go inside of us. And again, in Matthew 18, 15, it says, If your brother sins against you, go and rebuke him in private. If he listens to you, you have won a brother. Will you say, well, wait a second now. He's the one who did something bad to me. He's the one that hurt me. I'll just wait for him to come to me. To settle this issue because he's the one that did all the damage not me no that's not what we're supposed to do we are to quickly go to them whether you did right or you did the wrong you need to quickly go to that brother or sister and address the issue right away you need to take the offensive and go to that individual so freely you have received forgiveness freely you need to, for, to give forgiveness. And then also another cost of forgiving someone is that when we forgive, remember you are to forgive finally, fully. It's over. It's done once you clear the air with each other. Now, somebody might come up to you and they say, you know what, I've done something bad to you, will you forgive me? And then you're, most of the time, you're tempted to say to them, oh, that's okay. 
that's all right. Don't worry about it. You know, don't worry about it. You know what that is, don't you? That kind of response? That's pride. Pride. That is a prideful response because the truth is, you were hurt. You just don't want them to know it. Right? If they come to you asking for forgiveness, oh, that's okay. Don't worry about it. I'm, everything's okay. No. You were hurt. It's a very prideful response to set and try to brush it off, to gloss it over like nothing happened at all. So when you say something like that, when you say, oh, don't worry about it, it's okay, you're not forgiving that person as you should. That is not the right way to forgive someone. You know, when, just looking back at our example, I got again, one day judgment's going to come, and we're going to stand before that throne. God, I'm sorry for what I've done. Forgive me of my sins. <clears throat> oh, that's all right. That's okay. Don't worry about it, you silly sinner. That's all right. Is that the way God's going to do it? I don't think so. By taking it lightly, by just glazing it over, that does not constitute forgiveness at all. And simply saying something like, I forget it. That's okay. Don't worry about it. Just forget it. Is forgetting forgiving? By forgetting something, have we forgiven somebody, something or somebody? Right? We, that's, that's a no. We've got it backwards. We've got it backwards. Forgetting is not the way to forgive someone. Forgiving, if you reverse that, forgiving is the way we forget. We forgive first and then forget. We don't forget to forgive. We've been doing it backwards a lot. We want to forgive someone first and then we forget. So forgetting is never the means of forgiveness. It's the result of forgiveness. God remembers our trespasses against us no more because our trespasses has been forgiven. Not because he just said, ah, forget about it. No, that's not it at all. And when you go to someone, make sure that it is forgiveness that you get. Now, a lot of times, you'll go up to someone and you'll say, you know, hey, I understand you were hurt. If I hurt you, I'm sorry. Uh, first of all, that's not any kind of a confession to go up and say, if I did something or if I go up and say, uh, well, I heard that, that you're hurt, you know, and I'm sorry for that. That's not a confession at all. You know you hurt them. Say it. That helps clear the air. Just say, look, I'm sorry. I did you wrong. I harmed you. And now I ask for your forgiveness. Will you forgive me? And they say, oh, don't worry about it. That's okay. Forget about it. That was yesterday. Well, both of you are wrong. If you go up to them and say, if I hurt you, and then they say, don't forget about it. Both of you have handled the situation wrong. That is not the way that you handle it at all. If you go up and you say, I hurt you, and I am sorry. Please forgive me. And they say, don't forget about it. You know, we're fine. Don't worry. Don't worry. Your response should be, well, I can't forget about it, and I am worried. Will you forgive me? Make sure that it is forgiveness that you get out of that person. Because if you don't, the situation is still there. It has not gone away. And, and also, when you forgive, a costly requirement, when you forgive, it should be finally. When you forgive someone, whatever the issue is, it needs to be buried in the grave of God's forgetfulness forever. Not ever to be brought up again. It's over. It's over. Garth Brooks, he's got a song that I thought fit very well into this sermon. 
He's got a song that says, We buried the hatchet, but left the handle sticking out. <laughs> I was like, hmm, that sounds familiar. <laughs> we buried the hatchet, but left the handle sticking out. <clears throat> well, the hatchet might be buried, but often people will still want to grab a hold of that handle when they still are after somebody, right? When they want to use it against another. So you don't want to ever grab a hold of hatchet handles that have been buried. It's over. That is nothing but a stumbling block to forgiveness. You know, it's not necessary when you bury the hatchet with someone, when you bury that in the grave, that hatchet, it is not necessary to put a marker on that grave. You can forget where it, where it was buried. It's gone. All right? So do not hold, once you get that forgiveness, it's over. Do not hold bitterness against them. Okay, well, I've talked a little bit about the reasons, some reasons why we should forgive. Well, because we've been forgiven. If we don't forgive, we no longer can be forgiven. We should forgive others because if not, it's going to bring personal harm to ourselves. It keeps us in bondage. We should forgive because we gain our brother back. And there's also a high cost with forgiving, and that is, well, you know, the Bible says freely that we uh, have received, freely we should give. We are to give fully to people. We need to get for, uh, forgiveness from them and to forgive them. And when you forgive, we need to forgive by name. It's over. It's done and over with. So how do I do it then? I know I, know I should forgive. I know that there's going to be a cost required if I do forgive, but tell me, how do I forgive others? How do I forgive others? Because I know, I know that it's easy for me to stand up here in the pulpit and say, forgive, 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 forgive your neighbor. But when you start throwing real life circumstances in, it becomes a little more difficult. How do you forgive the person that might have raped your daughter? How do you forgive the person who might have mugged you while you're walking around in downtown New Orleans after hours? Maybe you might have a spouse or something that stole all your money and ran off with another woman or a man, whatever. How do you forgive that? And you might say, well, it's easy to forgive the little things, but I just can't forgive the big things. Just can't do it. Just can't do it. Well, thank God we have the Bible. And the Bible gives us our answers. Because I am here to tell you that yes, you can. Yes, you can forgive. There is nothing too great that you can't forgive. In, in Philippians chapter 2, in verse 13 is where we find the answer. To that question, how can I forgive someone who has truly hurt me? For it is God who is working in you or enabling you both to desire and to work out his good purpose. Philippians 2.13. Let me read it one more time. For it is God who is working in you, enabling you both to desire and to work out his good purpose. So to desire his good purpose and then to work out his good purpose. God has given two things to you, the desire to do his good purpose and the, and the ability to do his good purpose. So when you, feel, when you feel in those times where you just can't forgive, you need vengeance. <laughs> you need to lash back out. Don't forget what God says. God says, vengeance is mine. Vengeance is mine. Do we honestly believe in our hearts that God could probably do a better job on that person than what we could? I think so. Turn it all over to God. We should not take away what God says He's going to take care of. We, don't, we should not take that from God. You see, forgiveness is not just mental, but it's also physical as well. God gives you a desire God, help me to love this person. 
It is so strong. Help me to love this person. And Lord, help me to reflect you to this person. But God also gives us a way to work it out as well. He enables us to do His good will. And when we take both of those things and act on it, both the will and the desire to do His good works, then you start feeling that supernatural power of God flowing inside of you. 